On the London street, Michael Adebalajo and Michael Adebawale did this. Adebalajo tried to behead him. Adebawale hacked at his body. With the blood of his victim on his hands, Adebalajo tried to justify the atrocity. We must fight them as they fight us, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. He attended some of our activities. There's no difference between him and many other people who attended our activities. I mean, Al Mahajou. Adebalajo can be seen dressed in white, standing in a crowd of men outside Paddington Green Police Station. He's standing behind Anjum Chowdhury, who was then the leader of Al Mujaroon, now abandoned. Yeah, yeah, Mujahid. Mujahid was a very nice man, in fact. I knew him for a number of years. He attended some of our activities. There's no difference between him and many other people who attended our activities. I mean, Al Mahajun existed in this country from 1996 until it was dissolved in 2004. And I believe during that period, you know, he's around for a significant amount of time. You know, he attended lectures, went to demonstrations, did, did just about what any other uh, person who was associated with Al Mahajun did. He's a very nice man, I believe. He's a family man. You know, he's a very uh, calm uh, and non-violent man. I mean, even from the clip yesterday, you can see that he was concerned and apologising uh, to any women and children who were there. What he said in the clip, which has been played now quite widely, I think not many Muslims can disagree with. We must fight them as they fight us, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Are you refusing to condemn what happened I because condemn. you had a hand in radicalising Michael Adjibai? If radicalisation is calling for the Sharia, if radicalisation is exposing the British foreign policy, if radicalisation is uh, saying that the Muslims have a right to defend themselves, so I you, don't have any so qualms about that. you did radicalise him? No, 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 I don't think that uh, Michael... Adi Balajo, you know, or have we pronounced his surname, as we know him, Mujahid, was saying, oh, let me implement the Sharia. And then he went and got one British soldier and decapitated him. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. He's an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. What he did with a British soldier is clear in what he said afterwards. He didn't say afterwards, I'm implementing the Sharia. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. He's an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. It is the Qadiyya behind them that pushed them towards this act whilst they are sniggering in their homes, relaxing and sleeping in their beds, that they send the youth forth to their destruction. Between us, we decided that the soldier is the most fair target. Right, so in general, are you happy or sad about this attack? You know, uh, I don't think that it's allowed for Muslims to feel sorry for any non-Muslim who dies. As far as the action itself is concerned, I believe, personally, for me, that is not allowed because, you know, I live uh, under a covenant of security in this country in return for the life and wealth of the Muslims being protected. I believe in the Islamic opinion that I adopt is it's not allowed to target them. But that's not the only opinion. Yeah. You see, I mean, we saw that on 7-7, we saw that on 9-11, we saw it on 3-11, we saw it on many occasions. And the fact and the reality is, which the British government, I think, know, and many people know, and the fact and the reality is, which the British government, I think, know, and many people know, is that Sheikh Anna Awlaki, may Allah bless him, you know, Sheikh Osama bin Laden, may Allah give him paradise, and many other people like Al-Qaeda nowadays, and people like the Shabab in Somalia, and the whole list of people believe that there's absolutely no covenant of security whatsoever in the West. So not only soldiers, but even civilians who have voted for the government, for them, are a legitimate target. Now, that is an opinion out there. That is, you know, opinion based upon the Quran, the teachings of the Prophet, etc. So I can't reject the fact that there is another opinion. I don't think people were flying planes into buildings before 9-11, were they? No, but no, it was no, like no, nobody nobody thinks to themselves, oh, there's a plane, I think I'll just fly into the building. They did it for reasons, didn't they? They did it because there's a war taking place. Well, the point is that in war, you know, people kill each other. And sometimes, you know, there are people who get caught up in it. This is, this is the reality. 
So how many people would you say would agree with you in the Muslim community throughout the UK? I think, I think in terms of the practicing Muslims, all of them would agree with me. So for every single practicing Muslim? I think they, they, can't have a, they cannot disagree with me because I'm not saying anything other than what Islam says. Between us, we decided that the soldier is the most fair target because he joins the army with a with kind of an understanding that your life is at risk when you join the army. But rather, he was apologising, explaining why what they had done, if it is true, is it linked with the foreign policy of the British government? And we saw with 7-7, with Muhammad Sidi Khan, that he said, look, my words are not being heard, therefore I'm expressing them, you know, in a different way. And he was saying, I think, something very similar yesterday. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. He's an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. That's all I have to say. I mean, Allah's peace and blessings be upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Qa'adiyya are the worst sect of the Khawarij. Why? The Qa'adiyya meaning that they are the inciters. They sit back and they incite others. Who do they incite? They incite the Shabab and the youth. So they send them out on rallies. And they call them to these acts of transgression and murder and killing. Then they sit back in their homes and they snigger and they scoff and they laugh at what their hands have done. So the youth go out and they waste their lives. They kill others. And they destroy themselves. Whilst these individuals, these shayateen sit in their homes inciting others to go out the qa'adiyya. The worst sect of the khawarij. Kilabun nar, as the Prophet ﷺ described them. The dogs of the hellfire. Do you forbid from me the mentioning of Anjim Chowdhury? The leader of this satanic sect that travels around Britain. Who radicalized these two youth? To commit this act that they don't even know what they have done. I don't believe they even recognize what they have done in the light of the kitab and the sunnah. Because they are ignorant. And they do not know. It is the qadiyya behind them that pushed them towards this act. Whilst they are sniggering in their homes. That there's absolutely no covenant of security whatsoever in the West. So not only soldiers, but even civilians who have uh, voted for the government, for them, are a legitimate target. Now, that is an opinion out there. That is, you know, opinion based upon the Quran, the teachings of the Prophet, etc. So, Relaxing and sleeping in their beds, that they send the youth forth to their destruction. Do not be deceived. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our societies from these khawarij, from these enemies of Allah. These enemies of the Sunnah, these enemies who their forefathers killed the Sahaba. And in our times that they are killing innocent people. And in this time they are breaking the contracts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroy them. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kill their da'wah. And kill those individuals who are behind them. Carrying the da'wah of the khawarij, the qa'adiyya.